Om Tat Sat. Welcome to Gyan Bhakti. We are currently studying the scripture Mysticism of Ramayana. Commentary is by my Guruji, Swami Jyotirmanandji Maharaj, narrated by myself, Swami Nikhilananda. We were currently on the episode of the death of Meghanath. So let's continue. When Meghanath regained consciousness, he saw his father standing before him and he was terribly ashamed that he had been defeated in this way. He then decided to enter into a cave and perform a special unholy sacrifice that would make him invincible. Vibhishana, knowing the intention of Meghanath and the secret of that sacrifice, warned Rama. Immediately, Rama dispatched Lakshmana and all the great monkey generals of his army to stop the sacrifice and destroy Meghanath. Following the guidance of Vibhishana, they found that hidden cave where Meghanath was engaged in the whole unholy sacrifice of offering the blood and flesh of buffaloes. After tumbling down everything in that sacrificial altar, the monkey started tearing Meghanath's hair and kicking him. Terribly annoyed, Meghanath took his trident and ran after the monkeys. And soon he found himself facing Lakshmana as the commanding general of Ravana, Rama's army. After injuring Angada and Hanuman with his trident, he discharged that trident against Lakshmana. However, Lakshmana broke the weapon and went after Meghanath with a barrage of arrows. Seeing those terrible arrows coming towards him, Meghanath employed his demoniac magic and continued to fight in an invisible manner. At times he manifested himself and at times he disappeared. All the while Lakshmana became more and more tired of his tricks. Finally, Lakshmana discharged a divine arrow from his bow and that weapon sought out the invincible Meghanath and hit him right in the heart. At that time of death, Meghanath gave up his demoniac nature and uttered the name of Rama. Then Hanuman effortlessly picked up Meghanath's dead body and placed it by the gate of Lanka. The mystical meaning of this episode Meghanath in this context symbolizes Asmita Klesha, the affliction of egoism, which is born of ignorance or avidya, which is symbolized by Ravana. So Ravana is avidya and its son Meghanath is ahankara or egoism. Like Meghanatha, egoism gives rise to numerous desires which are like snakes that overpower or paralyze the human spirit. But then Garuda, who is the symbol of the force of insight and intuition, destroys all those snakish desires so that the forces of light become vitalized again and the spiritual battle of life can continue. Garuda is Lord Vishnu's vehicle who uh, and we know vultures can easily destroy snakes so uh, and um, eagles and so Garuda is that mystic um, vehicle of Lord Vishnu who graciously came to help during this difficult time in Rama's army. Finally, Lakshmana who is considered an incarnation of the Shesh serpent or Mahat, the cosmic mind, brings about the end of the ego sense through the unfoldment of pure reason. This leaves only one more mental affliction to be overcome, ignorance itself, Ravana. Like Meghanatha, Asmita Klesha is a subtle spiritual disease which cannot be easily eliminated. So the point of all these uh, different um, episodes and wars and struggles is to guide the aspirant to be firm and to be strong and dedicated and to be not afraid of these battles and wars and difficulties because God is on your side. Victory will be yours, but you have to be persistent and strong. So it fights in a very strange manner. Sometimes like Laksh uh, Meghanath was doing, appearing and disappearing. Sometimes disappearing as if by magic, no matter how difficult the task. However, there must be no relaxation of the war against the ego principle. 
because unless we sublimate the ego we cannot move to the next and final stage of vanquishing and destroying ignorance itself if that war is relaxed during sadhana the ego will begin to receive nourishment from the illusions of the unconscious which is symbolized by the cave there it performs an unholy sacrifice sacrificing the vision of non duality for the vision of duality sacrificing the awareness of truth for the awareness of illusion so that sacrifice must be stopped otherwise we will go backwards meghnad is referred to as indrajit one who had defeated indra in ancient lit literature indra means the soul when there is asmita when where there is iness and mindness the soul within you is overpowered and cannot assert its majesty however when indrajit encounters lakshmana a symbolic boundless austerity and resolute will power it is swiftly destroyed so we have to have intense patience faith and very strong will power that is the mystical meaning of this beautiful episode so let's move to the next episode of ravana goes to battle ravana Mandodri and the other queens spent a terrible night grieving over the death of their dear son Meghnada. When dawn came, Ravana summoned his remaining generals and soldiers and with great determination said, "Go and engage yourself in fighting with the monkeys and bears. I will take care of those two brothers, Rama and Lakshmana." Soon the armies confronted each other and the fighting commenced. Vibhishana saw that Ravana was well equipped with a chariot and Rama was on foot. Out of affection for Rama, Vibhishana said to him, "O oh Lord, you have no chariot, you have no armor, you do not even have shoes on your feet. How can you fight Ravana, who is so well equipped?" Rama replied, "O oh friend, the chariot that brings victory is of a different kind." that chariot of virtue is the type of chariot that i possess so it's a very deep mystical meaning here however realizing the practical demands of the situation indra the lord of god sent his own divine chariot for rama's use this chariot was driven by matali indra's own chariot driver and yoked to four beautiful horses that moved with the speed of mind seeing rama seated on that effulgent chariot the monkeys and bears felt inspired and rushed towards ravana with renewed enthusiasm unable to endure the attack Ravana used his magic and created the illusion that Rama and Lakshmana were everywhere in all directions because of those manifestations appeared they appeared so real none of the monkeys and bears or their generals could continue the fight in response Lord Rama discharged a special arrow that removed the illusory images so that Ravana could not could be clearly observed Then Rama said, "O oh great heroes, you are all tired. Therefore, just rest and witness the duel between Ravana and myself." Bowing his head to the lotus feet of the Brahmans, Sri Rama had Matali drive the chariot forward. Seeing Rama coming towards him, Ravana was filled with wrath. So he roared and challenged Rama with great conceit. Soon millions of his weapons began to spread throughout the sky and across the earth but Rama destroyed them all Ravana then injured Matali the chariot driver and Rama became extremely angry all the arrows in his quiver began to vibrate and the whole earth trembled while the demons shook with fear the god smiled in the heavenly world knowing that the end of Ravana was surely near After continued fierce fighting between Rama and Ravana Rama discharged 
30 arrows which cut off Ravana's 10 heads and 20 arms. However, according to the special boon that Ravana had received, the moment his heads and arms were cut off, new sets arose and the new sets were even more vigorous than the previous ones. In the spirit of sport, Rama went on cutting Ravana's heads and arms and soon thousands and thousands of heads began to whirl in the sky. Ravana became furious and discharged a special weapon towards Vibhishana. In order to protect Vibhishana, Ravana stepped forward to receive the impact of that weapon. When it entered his chest, Rama fell unconscious for a short while. Seeing this, Vibhishana rushed towards Ravana and engaged him in a terrible battle. When Vibhishana became tired, Hanuman rushed in and continued the fight. At one point, Hanuman flew into the air and Ravana held on to his tail, thus continuing the strange duel in the sky over Lanka. So we will continue this uh, beautiful episode, the final um, destruction of Ravana by Lord Rama in tomorrow's satsanga. This is Swami Nikhilananda. Om Tat Sat.